All right. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show that the core converges to allergen equilibrium as the number of consumers goes to infinity. So that formalizes Edgeworth initial idea that I explained on the first slide. So interaction alone gives us allergen equilibrium outcome. Because uh, we describe the interaction between players uh, using the concept of the core. But in the definition of the core, there is a, I, don't mention, I didn't mention anything about the price mechanism or specific trading mechanism. So the definition of the core is independent of some special market mechanism. So, you know, without relying on market completeness or price taking behavior, or without relying on some market mechanism, uh, we can show that interaction alone gives us large and equilibrium allocation, so socially desirable allocation. Okay, so in this in this video, I'm going to show that uh, so the allocation in the core is the same as allocation in large and equilibrium, uh, large and equilibrium uh, as the size of economy grows large enough. Hmm. So this is often referred to as the core equivalence theorem. So core is equivalent to large equilibrium allocation uh, in a large economy. Okay. So the idea is very simple. As the size of the economy grows, because uh, there are tons of possible you know, different coalitions. So we can think of there are several ways to interact. So for players, there are several ways to interact. Right? So as the size of the economy grows, the competitors should have more opportunities to improve upon any given allocation. So some allocation will be blocked by some coalition. So thereby shrinking the size of the core. So as the number of consumers goes to infinity, so it grows large enough, the size of the core will shrink. Originally, you know, core is a larger set uh, so core is a larger set than the set of large and equilibrium, okay? But because the size of this core shrinks and it actually converges to large and equilibrium. All right, so although the idea is really simple, the way to formalize this idea is very difficult because as the size of the economy grows, the dimension of the allocation also increases so does the core. So think about a uh, uh, economy consisting of three consumers. So I is given by one, two, three. And then we add just one more consumer. One, two, three, four. Okay. But this added consumer may have different characteristic. So may have different, uh, different preference relation from these yeah, three existing consumers and the different initial endowment, okay? And then if we think about the number of possible coalitions, in case of three, we have a total of seven. But in case of four, we have a total of 15. So the number of you know, possible coalitions increases exponentially. It increases substantially, right? Also, the dimension of allocations will be different. In case of a three, we can think of allocation for one, two, three. So the dimension is going to be three. But in case of four, you know, that is going to be a four dimensional vector, right? So, so does the core. So the analysis of the core as the number of the consumer increases will be very complicated, okay? So it will be very difficult. So one way to circumvent this difficulty is, uh, so we limit ourselves to a particularly simple type of growth that is a N replica economy. So the idea is this. So given exchange economy, right? We can so we think of N replica economy denoted by EN. So that is economy with N consumers of each type I. So now we class, classify the set of consumers into separate types. But for simplicity, we assume there are only two types, type A and type B. Only two types exist. 
and then consumer of the same type have the same consumption set and have the same preference relation and have the same initial endowment. Okay, so E1, because we assume just the two types. We, we assume there are just the two types. So E1 is one replica economy. So there are just the one consumer of each type. So A1 and B1. So that is a two consumer exchange economy. And E2, now there are two consumers of the same type. So A1 and A2, two consumers of type A. So these two consumers share the same consumption set, identical preference relation, and the identical initial endowment. Okay, and then B1 and B2. So two more consumers of type B. Yeah, and this, you know, these two consumers have the same characteristics. Okay, so that ex exclude out uh, this possibility. So one added consumer may have different characteristics. Okay, and the E3 is going to be, you know, pure exchange economy with the six consumers, so three consumers of each type, and so on. So if we so if we restrict attention to this type of growth, and the way to increase the size of economy is really simple. Now we increase the number of replicas. Okay, so now we let n go to infinity. Okay, and thinking about the core, and we examine whether core indeed shrinks to Wallachian equilibrium location. Okay. Still, we have to worry about the dimension of allocations, but it turns out that there is a nice way to, so there is a nice way to, uh, you know, handle this dimension issue, okay? That is the so-called equal treatment property. So we're gonna show that in a second, all right? And then let me first show you the basic idea of this core equivalence theorem. So using this simple uh, using this simple example. So in this example, we are going to show that uh, allocation X is in the core. So it has the core property in uh, one replica economy. So in E1, so there are only uh, one consumer of each type, A1 and B1. Okay. So this is OA, uh, origin for type A. This is origin type for B. Okay, so this allocation X is in the core because in E1, because in E1 there are only two consumers. We know that core is identical with the contract curve in this case. So uh, if we think about the contract curve in this edge root box, because uh, we have initial uh, endowment vector right here. So we can draw two indifference curves through this initial endowment. Say this is a uh, indifference curve for type B. Okay. And then this is a uh, indifference curve for type A passing through uh, the initial endowment. And then contract curve is defined as uh, the portion of the part to set between these two indifference curve. So allocation X is on the contract curve. So that is a one element of the core in this economy. Okay. But now we are going to show that this allocation X is not in the core in E2. So now we have two consumers of each type, A1, A2, and B1 and B2. Okay. So in two by two exchange economy with two replicas, okay, the allocation X is on the contract curve, but not in the core. Okay. Now we have to construct one coalition in this economy that can improve upon this allocation X, okay? Because now we wanna show that allocation X 
is not in the core, so it does not have the core property. So we can find out some correlation S that blocks allocation X. Okay, in this economy E2. And the way to construct correlation is this. So now we think of correlation S in this economy are uh, consisting of um, consisting of so the two consumers of type B, B1 and B2, and they make a correlation with a one consumer of type A, so say A1. Okay. It can be A2, does not matter. Just as long as you know one consumer of type A joins this coalition, then we can so we can block this allocation X. Okay. So after making this coalition, now we can think of a, a new distribution, new allocation. Uh, so here we award X1 prime to A1, so this X1 prime. So over this allocation to this consumer, this member. And X2 prime to B1 and B2. So this allocation to the other two members. Okay, now we are going to show that this allocation is feasible inside of this coalition, okay? And every member inside a coalition strictly prefers X prime to the previous allocation X, okay? So the first condition, everyone, so every member in the coalition strictly prefer new allocation to the previous one. That is quite evident in this figure because X1 prime, that allocation, is above the indifference curve through the allocation X, meaning that type A consumer strictly prefers X1 prime to X. And likewise, if we compare X2 prime X for type B, type B's indifference curve through X is right here, and X2 prime, the new allocation is above or the type B's indifference curve. Okay, so in fact, you know, every member in the coalition restricted prefer X prime to X. Okay, so the first condition is satisfied. Now we have to check on the feasibility condition, whether this allocation is feasible inside the coalition. Okay. So for that purpose, uh, we have to show that. So we have to show that uh, total consumption bundle. So aggregate consumption in that coalition. So in that allocation. So that is a x1 prime. So we have to award this allocation to one consumer of type A and x to prime but we have a two type b consumers right so that is a aggregate demand in the allocation in that coalition okay and that we have a two consumers of a type b and one consumer of a type a so their initial endowment is so that amounts to uh, omega a plus two omega b All right, so we have to show this. Then allocation X prime is going to be feasible. All right, and then the way to find this X1 prime, so X1 prime is a slight above uh, the indifferent, indifference curve through allocation X. And X to prime is in fact defined as the middle point of this X1 prime and omega. Okay, but we have to be a little bit careful when we read this uh, coordinate of this point because x to prime is the allocation for type B. So we have to use this origin when we read this uh, when we read this allocation. 
right? But the uh, if we think about the size of this box, okay? So the size of this box is given by omega. So omega is uh, omega one and omega two. Okay, so total endowment of uh, each group. So the length of this box is omega one. Height is going to be omega two. Okay. So if we read this point x to prime with respect to this origin, the origin for type A, that is going to be omega minus x to prime, right? Because x to prime is going to be this coordinate. So in this allocation, x to prime, you know, all. So this amount of good one is awarded to type B, and this amount of type, or uh, this amount of so this amount of good one and this amount of good two will be awarded to type B. Okay. So if we read this point using this origin, that's going to be omega minus x to prime. Right. So once again, that point is defined as the middle point between x1 prime and omega. So we have this relation. All right, so, so, okay. Let me multiply, so let me multiply both sides by two. We obtain two omega minus two x to prime equals x1 prime plus omega. Oh, so, all right. Uh, so when we read this omega, this point, using this origin, it should be omega A, right? Omega A. Uh, type A is initial endowment. Once again, when we read this point omega with respect to this origin, that stands for type A's initial endowment. So it should be omega a. When we read this x1 prime, so x1 prime is a allocation for type a. Okay, so we can just read it as x1 prime. Yeah. So we have omega a here. All right. So x1 prime plus two x2 prime. Okay, that is a total uh, aggregate demand. So aggregate demand under allocation x prime. <clears throat> <All right. clears throat> so now we collect omega terms on the left side. Then we have two omega minus omega a, but omega is total endowment of each type. So we can rewrite this omega a plus omega b, so minus omega a. So we have one omega a plus two omega b. Okay, so we have this one. Okay, so that means aggregate demand under allocation x prime is the same as total endowment inside the coalition. So x, x prime, allocation x prime is feasible in that coalition. Okay, so consistent with two conditions in that uh, definition of the core. So meaning that this coalition S will improve upon the allocation X. Right? So it is not the so it is not element of the core in this economy. Okay, so in the end, the size of the core will shrink as we increase the number of replicas. Alright, so using this a uh, clever way to increase the size of the economy. Now we can think of allocation in that N replica economy, because N, in N replica economy, we have N consumers of type A and N consumers of type B. So allocation, still we have a dimension issue, right? As, a, as, N, go, as N increases, the demand of allocation also increases. Okay. So here x i m 
So for instance, XA2 stands for allocation for the second replica uh, of type A, right? And we say uh, this allocation is feasible if the uh, aggregate demand in type A and type B equal to total endowment of this economy. But in economy E and because we have N consumers of each type and type A has a initial endowment omega A and we have N consumers of type A and each type, each consumer of type B has an initial endowment omega B and we have a N consumers of type B. So total initial endowment in this economy EM can be written this way. All right. So now how to handle that dimension issue? Once again, as N grows, the dimension of allocation also increases. So that makes a uh, analysis of the core quite complicated. So one way, so the next proposition greatly simplifies, uh, simplifies our analysis of the core. Uh, so it is, it is a so-called equal treatment property. So it states that Allocation, if allocation X belongs to the core of economy EM, okay, then allocation has the equal treatment property. So every consumer in the same type is treated equally. So XA1, if allocation X is in the core, so if that has the core property, then inside the core XA1, equals XA2 all the way to XAN. So every consumer of a type A is treated equally. Okay, assign the same allocation. All right, and the same thing applies to our consumers of a type B. So XB1 equals XB2 and XBN. All right, so in words, any two consumers of the same time must receive the same bundle, must be assigned the same uh, allocation. All right, so the way to prove this proposition is uh, the same as before. So we are going to use, so we are going to prove this statement by contradiction. So we first negate the conclusion of this proposition. Suppose that in allocation X. So allocation X is a one element of the core. Nevertheless, at that allocation, each type is not treated equally. So not treated equally uh, in allocation in allocation X. Okay? Now we are going to show that X is not one element of the core. So it does not have the core property. So there exists a one coalition S in this economy, in this economy EN, that improves upon the allocation X. So that will be excluded out from the core. Okay, so that is actually the contrapositive statement of this. So if we prove this statement, then we are done. All right, and then the basic idea is that this, uh, because, you know, each type is not equally treated. So there must be a one type, also one replica in each type. For example, in type A, there exists a one replica who is treated most poorly. Let me call this a underdog of type A. Under the of type A. And similarly, type B, so these N consumers are not equally treated. So there must be one replica in type B. So underdog of type B. 
And without loss of generality, let me call that the first replica. So the first replica in each type is, is treated most, most poorly. So meaning that using utility function, you know, uh, for the first replica in type A, so the assign, so the allocation assigned to the first replica is the lowest utility uh, in type A. And similarly in type B, allocation to assign to the first replica in type B is the lowest utility. All right, now we consider average bundle of each type, okay? So we do summation of X A M and divided by number of consumers, okay? Because there are N consumers in, of type A, so we divide it by N. So X A bar is the average bundle of a type A. Similarly, X B bar defined, defined similarly, that is the average bundle of a type B, okay? And then, X is a feasible allocation because uh, we assume that X is the X is a one element of the core. So by definition of the core, allocation X should be a feasible allocation. So meaning that uh, sum of X A N plus sum of X B N is equal to N omega A plus n omega p. So now dividing both sides by n, we can see that uh, the sum of the average bundles equal to you know, initial endowment of each type, omega a and omega b. All right. Now we are showing that if uh, in allocation x, type is not treated equally then allocation X will be blocked by some coalition. So now we have to think of some coalition that improves upon this allocation X, okay? And that coalition is going to be in a coalition between the two underdogs, okay? So we choose A1 and B1, who treated the most poorly in each group, in each type, and make a coalition, and they make a coalition. Okay, because each type has a initial endowment omega A and omega B. So A1 has an initial endowment omega A, B1 has omega B. Okay, so inside this coalition, this average bundle is feasible. Okay, now we are going to show that, you know, these two consumers prefer, that strictly prefer average bundle to the previous bundle X, okay? So X A bar strictly prefers to uh, X A, X A1 for type A, and X B bar, average bundle for type B, strictly prefers to X B1, or uh, the allocation assigned to the underdog of type B, uh, or type B. Okay. Then we are done, right? So the way to show that is uh, we are going to use uh, one assumption on preference relation because we assume that preference relation is strictly convex. So the associated utility function is going to be strictly quasi concave. And remember the quasi-concave definition. So we say one function u is quasi-concave if for every x1 and x2 and for every lambda between zero uh, between zero and one, uh, this notation, this is a mathematical notation meaning that for all. Okay, uh, the following inequality is true. So u of lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2 that is larger than or equal to minimum of 
U, U of X1 uh, and U of X2. Okay. So if this inequality holds, then we say function U is a quasi-concave. And U is going to be strictly quasi-concave. Strictly quasi-concave. If this inequality is a straight. Okay. So now using that strictly quasi-concave utility function, uh, we can show this relation. So utility from average bundle x bar by definition of the average bundle we can rewrite this we can rewrite this as you know this one all right now we are going to show that so utility from average bundle is going to be strictly higher than utility from the uh, allocation assigned to the underdog of type a Right, but that inequality comes from uh, the definition of strictly quasi concave, so strict quasi concavity. So, by strict quasi concavity, UA is strictly quasi concave. We know that this will be this quantity will be larger than minimum of uh, u of xa1 so u a xa1 u a x a n right but we so we denote the xa1 the first replica as the uh, the underdog of type a so that's going to be this minimum value is going to be x a or u a of x a one, hmm. right? So that is immediate from you know that assumption on preference relation. Okay, so because utility function is strictly quasi concave, that underdog of type a will strictly prefer that average bundle to the allocation assigned to himself. Okay, and the same inequality applies to type B, or the underdog of type B. So this guy also still prefer that average bundle of a type B to his initial uh, allocation. Right. So we show that. Uh, so we show that uh, there is a better assign, so better allocation for these two members inside the coalition, and that is feasible. So we conclude that allocation X does not belong to the core, right? Because it's blocked by some correlation. All right. So one advantage of this equal treatment property, so whenever we have a two types, then uh, we can display any core allocation of uh, e n, no matter what this n, no matter what the number of uh, replicas in the edge root box, because they are going back to the picture of the edge root box. Because if allocation x, so if this allocation is one element of the core, then we know that at this allocation, every consumer of type A will be treated equally. Right? And every consumer of type B will be treated equally. Right? And then it should be feasible. So that should be in the edge root box. Okay? So that any core allocation uh, will indicate one point in the edge root box. Okay? So that greatly simplifies our analysis of the core. Because, you know, without this property, equal treatment property, we don't have any clue about the shape of the core, right? Even in this two replica, so n replica economy. 
So even if even with that assumption there are only two types, we have no clues about the shape of the core. But due to that equal treatment property, we now know that every core allocation must in or must be inside of this box. All right, so that's a pretty good thing. And furthermore, we don't have to worry about the dimension issue. So because you know, although we have n different consumers for each type, because you know if x allocation x is in the core, then you know these numbers are the same. Okay, so that boils down to just the two numbers. So that is a good thing. All right, so now using this property, we are going to prove that the last theorem in our study of general equilibrium theory, that is the core equivalence theorem. Okay, so the theorem states that uh, suppose that x, x star, so L, feasible allocation x star is in the core. Okay, for every n replica economy, so no matter what the number of replicas, you know, allocation x star is in the core. That x star is a Wallagian equivalent location. Okay, so that is sufficient for limit of c sub n. So the core in the economy, so in the in the n replica economy, as n goes to infinity, is equal to Wallagian equivalent location, because we already know that c sub n is a larger set. So it's a superset of Wallagian equilibrium. Okay, now we are going to show that if x star is a one element of the core for every n, okay, then if we show that x star is a Wallagian equilibrium location, then we are going to show this one, Cn for every n, is a uh, subset of Wallagian equilibrium location. So, in fact, those two sets are, uh, you know, identical. All right. And then the way to show this statement is, uh, we are going to think of a contrapositive statement. All right. So, if, so the, the statement of proposition can be put this way. Um, it's a contrapositive statement. If allocation y is not on Wallagian equilibrium, so if uh, y, so let me use a different letter, so y is not Wallagian equilibrium allocation, then there exists some number n such that y is not in the core, in that economy. Okay? So that is a, a contrapositive statement of uh, statement in proposition 4.3. So if we prove this statement, then we are done. Okay. So the last statement, y is not in the core, that means that y will be blocked by some coalition in a large economy. All right. So, uh, so here, let me prove this statement using this figure. Okay, so here we have uh, two types, uh, so OA and OB. So regarding number two as type B and regarding number one as type A. All right. And then here is the equilibrium allocation, X star. So this one is X star. Equilibrium allocation. All right, so, and this is a uh, initial endowment, omega. Okay. So because x star is a Wallagian equilibrium location, so if we draw line segment uh, connecting this x star and omega, and we obtain equilibrium price vector. So x star is a Wallagian equilibrium, so, you know, the two indifference curves are tangent to each other, and then the tangent line is going to be this price vector. Okay, and then let me 
consider some allocation y that is a not logical equilibrium. So let me consider this one. This allocation y. So y is not logical equilibrium, meaning that if I connect a uh, so if I draw a line segment connecting uh, allocation y and initial endowment. Now this blue line is not equilibrium price factor. So at allocation y, you know, the two indifference curves passing through allocation y are not tangent to each other. Okay, sorry. Uh, so this equilibrium, this blue line is not going to be tangent line uh, to the two indifference curve through this allocation y. So if we draw, say, type A's indifference curve through this allocation y, that will intersect this line segment, like this way. All right. So consider the line segment between y and omega, which must intersect with one type's indifference curve through the allocation y. Otherwise, if if you know if if it does not intersect, then allocation y is going to be Wallachian equilibrium. So that's a contradiction with this assumption. All right. Now we are going to make use of a strict convexity again. By strict convexity, we know that indifference curve is convex toward the origin. So it looks like this. Okay. So we can find one allocation GA. Okay. So that is an allocation for type A. That is on the line segment between y and omega and above the indifference curve through this allocation y. Okay, so as a result, type A consumers will prefer GA to YA because uh, you know this YA is on this indifference curve. But GA will be above this indifference curve, so type A will strictly prefer GA to YA. Okay. Remember, we are going to show that we want to show that Y will be blocked by some coalition. Okay, so we have to construct a one coalition in this large economy. Okay. All right, and then you know. Our uh, preference relation is assumed to be continuous. So GA strictly preferred to YA. So we can think of uh, this one, this one. Okay. So GA is defined, so GA is given by some point on the line segment between Y and omega. So we can write this GA as a linear combination. So Y lambda y a plus one minus lambda uh, omega a right the way to read it is coordinate the coordinate of this point using this omega o a this origin is a omega a and for this point it should be read as y a okay and g a is uh, some point on the line segment between these two points so it can be expressed as uh, some linear combination with some uh, constant lambda between 0 and 1. Okay? And because a preference relation is assumed to be continuous, we can approximate that GA, so this linear combination, using this one. So if n is large enough, we can find some k, this bundle is a, a very close to this bundle. So the actual value of GA. Okay, so GA is uh, approximated by uh, this bond when n is large enough. All right. 
So if you understand this, then the, the remaining step is a piece of cake. So now we consider a large correlation S in this economy. So given this N, uh, we consider correlation S consisting of all consumers of type A are involved in this correlation. And then M minus K consumers of type B are also joined, so are also involved in this correlation. So total two N minus K consumers uh, will consist of, so the correlation S will consist of a two N minus K consumers. All right. And in this correlation, we are going to consider allocation X that owes GA to type A. So awarding this allocation to type A and awarding allocation YB to type B. Okay. And by definition of GA, every type, every consumer of type A will strictly prefer GA to YA the previous allocation. So the type A consumer will strictly prefer new allocation GA in this allocation X, right? So these consumers are happier, right? But for type B consumers are indifferent because in the previous allocation, they are assigned YB. Even in the same allocation X, they are assigned YB, okay? But we can make them slightly happier, so slight, slightly better, just, you know, because GA is a strictly preferred to, strictly preferred to YA. So we slightly subtract away by epsilon from this GA, and then give it to type B. So make this YB, YB plus epsilon, okay? And epsilon is a very small number, so still GA minus epsilon strictly prefer to YA for type A, okay? But, you know, although that is a negligible, as long as epsilon is a positive number, then now type B consumers, N minus K consumers of type B, will strictly prefer this bundle to this bundle, previous bundle. So we can redistribute the allocation by removing a little from type A and giving it type B to get strict preference for type B. So to make every consumer in this coalition be strictly happier. All right, now the thing is, so now we show that the first condition of the core is satisfied. So every consumer inside, every member inside the coalition strictly prefers new allocation to the previous one. Once again, we are, you know, we are, we want to show that Y is blocked by some coalition. So we have to find some, we have to construct a one coalition and we have to find out some allocation feasible inside this coalition. And every member inside the coalition strictly prefers the new allocation to the previous one. And we just find out, you know, new allocation that is X. You know, awarding GA to type A and YB to type B. Okay. Now the remaining thing is we have to show that allocation X is indeed feasible inside of this coalition. Okay. And because there are N consumers of type A and the allocation X promises uh, GA, allocation GA for type A. So we need N times GA for these consumers. And allocation X promises YB for type B. So for M minus K consumers, we need this. Okay, so that is a aggregate demand in the allocation X. And for this allocation X to be feasible, because in this coalition, we have N consumers of type A, so the, the total initial endowment is going to be N times omega A, as we have M minus K consumers of a type B, so we have to add it to M minus K times omega B. So we have to show that this is equal to this one. Okay, but by definition of GA, 
Okay, G. We can substitute that expression for G A here. Then we can do simple algebra here. So N distributing M. Then 1 minus K over M becomes N minus K. Right? So we have K omega A and M minus K Y A plus M minus K Y B. So we can combine these two terms by factoring out M minus K. Right? And then allocation Y is feasible allocation. Right? Because that is a one point inside the box. So if we add Y A and Y B, so Y A to Y B, and that is going to be, uh, so that's going to be omega. So omega A plus omega B. Okay. So that reduces down to, so if we substitute omega A plus omega B, and then distributing M minus K, you can easily see that that is equal to total endowment of, uh, you know, this coalition. So the allocation X is indeed feasible. All right, so this is the proof of uh, the core equivalence theorem. So that is a little bit complicated, but I think, uh, so hopefully this is clear, but if you have any questions or you have any difficulty some in some steps, don't hesitate to contact me. And this is the final result of general equilibrium theory. So we just go over, uh, we just go, we just went over uh, the basic idea of uh, so the initial idea by Edgeworth interaction alone gives us Wallachian equilibrium allocation. So socially desirable allocation. So without relying on market mechanism or two assumptions, uh, two underlying assumptions on the market mechanism, we can achieve interaction alone. With, with the interaction alone in large economy, we can achieve a socially desirable allocation. All right? So that is the end of the theory. And then next week, we are going to study some applications. And that will be much more interesting than this previous theory. And then I will come back to, I will come back with a, uh, some interesting applications next week. So hope you guys find this video useful and I'll show you, I'll see you guys in the next video.